Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to days 13 and 14 of our Tokyo to Hokkaido road trip. After my host family picked me up at Shiroishi Station, we drove north and came to a rest stop with the fanciest public restroom I've ever been in. In the stalls were a tray to put your phone or bag, as well as an umbrella holder. We then drove about an hour west to our lodging for the night at a hotel, snagging some delicious Nepalese curry for dinner. The next day, we checked out of the hotel and made our way to Asahiyama Zoo, one of the two main zoos in Hokkaido. Situated on the outskirts of the city, the zoo sees on average about a million visitors a year that come to enjoy the interactive and up-close exhibits. From the entrance, we first came to the giraffe house, which allowed visitors to see the animals from all angles and heights, and nearby was the hippo house, where, in addition to the massive creatures, we came across pelicans, ostriches, and warthogs. Inside were also small tanks holding various insects and arthropods. Next, we made a quick stop at Totori Village, a large netted area that housed geese, swans, flamingos, and other birds. From there, we walked over to see the penguins, who are ridiculously fast swimmers. I tried to get some footage, but my endeavor was in vain. In the winter, the zoo hosts a penguin walk, where you can walk side by side with the friendly animals along a designated trail. This glass tube, dubbed the Marine Way, is where many people gather to see seals swimming up and down the passageway. With a focus on animals that live in colder climates, the zoo houses around 700 animals hailing from 120 different species. The zoo is also big on behavior exhibition, which is meant to showcase the animals in the most natural manner that would mimic their behavior out in the wild. They did a good job of giving visitors a chance to see such creatures, large and small, so up close and personal. Along with red pandas, we also saw leopards, yezo shika deer, which I saw on my solo trip to Sapporo just the day before, various owls and red-crowned cranes, highly aquatic birds native to eastern Japan, as well as parts of Mongolia and China. We walked through the amphibian and reptile house, checking out snakes and lizards, as well as passing by different types of birds on the way. Nearing the end of our time at the zoo, we checked out the chimpanzees, which had a large outdoor area to swing around on, as well as different bars and platforms in an indoor area. We got the chance to see their feeding time, which involved a zookeeper tossing them their food from a distance. The chimps were situated near the other primates, like the colobuses, gibbons, and orangutans. On the way out, we spotted some reindeer as well as some peacocks. We briefly perused the gift shop and then headed back into town to eat lunch at a nearby roadside stop. Once there, we collected our stamp and checked out the local souvenirs while we waited for our food. Along with the typical sweets and keychains, I came across decorative bears carved from wood, which gave them an interesting look, as well as more pouches and bags adorned with traditional Ainu patterns. I ended up just buying a small pouch and a cookie for the road, and by that time, our ramen was ready. After that, we traveled south towards Bie and found ourselves near Zerubu Hill, a beautiful flower field. Inside, they had all kinds of lavender-infused products like hats, heated pillows and blankets, as well as croquettes of various flavors to snack on. There was also a nice ATV ride through the fields on a pre-made track to better take in the scenery. My host family paid for my ticket, which cost around $3.50, and was well worth the money. I had to stop often to take pictures because it was kind of tricky to film and ride the vehicle at the same time. Afterwards, we headed up the hill where there were more photo spots, as well as an ice cream shop offering all kinds of slushies and melon ice cream. It also had a great view of the manicured gardens and accompanying scenery.
With bike rentals available to tour the fields, a nearby observatory and restaurant, which we didn't have time to visit, as well as the expansive Tokachi Dake mountain range in the distance, Zerubu Hill was a cool attraction I wish we had more time to explore. Shortly after, we piled back into the RV to head to our hotel for the evening. We headed south from Bie and in about 35 minutes made our way to Furano. While Furano and Bie are well known for having great powder snow for winter activities, during the summer season, the centralmost towns of Hokkaido boasts picturesque landscapes chock full of lavender and represent a quieter, more nature-filled side to Japan. We even spotted the name of the town emblazoned on the side of a hill. Once arriving at the hotel, we checked in and rested for a bit. My host family was gracious enough to let me sleep in the private room while they occupied the main living space. I snacked on some cookies I'd bought in Sapporo and then headed to the onsen with my host mom, which was located on the top floor. The lounge gave a nice view of the city and mountains, and the outdoor bath was pretty nice too. Along with typical hotel amenities, as well as free popsicles for the guests, women had the option of either the public laundry room or a private one that's open via touchpad with a number combo. After our bath, I joined the rest of my host family for dinner, and then we headed to bed to rest up for the busy day ahead of us. Thanks so much to those of you who stayed until the end. I hope you're enjoying the journey so far. Join me and my host fam in the next video where we head to Farm Tomita, a sprawling farm with tasty locally grown melons as well as five hectares of lavender, and then as we bunk for the night at a scenic campsite at the base of the Mount Tokachidake mountain range. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and feel free to comment any thoughts or questions. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.